8, 1. Look what it says here. Last week we talked about the fulfillment of the law is? Okay, one person just listened to me last week. The fulfillment of the law is? Love. Now about food, sacrifice, being offered to idols. Yes, we know that we all have knowledge about this issue. We all have knowledge of what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Or what sin is and what is not. Look what it says here. But while knowledge makes us feel important, it is love that builds up the church. I can guarantee you, everyone sitting in this room right now has the ability and has enough love to give. Can I hear an amen? We're just not giving it sometimes. The Bible says where you put your heart is your treasure. Where you put your, your heart is your treasure. There is also. If you love the Lord, if you love the church. Actually, our problem with, with you know, sometimes with financially, it's just a matter of love. Can you hear that? It's a matter of love. How much you love your home church? Just the way it is. I love you. I love my home church. Your pastor is dollar fifty. It's five dollars for this month. Yeah. I love you. I love you really great. It's a matter of love, people. Because love has no boundaries. When you say you love God, God says, I love you. Even though I know all your nasties, I love you. It, it, know your secrets, know everything. I love you. God says no. The Bible says if you are driven by love, there's no such thing as the law. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? A church, love. How much we love God, how much we love this church. Secondly, continue reading, verse 8. Look what it says here. Oh, verse 7. Therefore, Therefore, what? Verse 7. Can we put up verse 7? Therefore, 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 accept each other just as Christ has, so that, so that God will be given glory. Remember that Christ came as a servant to the Jews to show that God is true to the promise He made to their ancestors. He also came so that the Gentiles might Give glory to God, His mercies to them. That is what the psalmist meant when he wrote, For this I will praise you among Gentiles. I will sing praises to your name. And if we jump in verse 13, it says here, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will, what? Overflow. With a confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Number two, now we are called to accept. Each other as Christ accepted us. Say accept. Accept doesn't mean approval. We have to understand that everyone is accepted in the family of God. If you are in the family of God. Paul says Every, everything is permissible for me. But not everything is beneficial. If a brother is sinning. We should tell that brother you're sinning. Will accept you for who you are. But we have to be true to what the Word of God says. Can I hear an amen? amen? Paul's calling has been clear to him by God and that he is he will be an apostle to the Gentiles. You have to understand that Paul was called to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And you know the irony of that is Paul was a Jewish leader and a Pharisee from the time of Benjamin. Look what it says here. Look at what it says. I just give you an idea of what that means. You know what? Accepting someone was the very first struggle of the early first converts of Christianity. That was the big thing that they struggled with. Because those people who accept the Christ are mostly Jewish people. And guess what? They don't have nothing what anything to do with Gentiles or anything outside the Jewish nation. And so when they came to the Lord, the Lord told them, there's no more such thing as Jews and Gentiles. Can I hear an amen? In our series, we talk about that. For God has no 
favoritism. There is no Jew, there is no Gentiles. Everyone is under the what? Uh, fallen short of God's glory. Everyone has sinned. But the early converts, early Christians, they have a hard time because the law told them, oh, you shouldn't be associating with those Gentiles. And here Paul received a calling and God told him, you are going to be an apostle to the Gentiles. When Jesus Christ came, Jesus Christ came, said, for salvation is for the Jews first. But it doesn't mean just only. Jesus understood, that's why he preached in Jerusalem, Judea. He preached to his people because that was his, that was his purpose, to start there. That's why he discipled 12 and one of them betrayed him. But those 11 discipled more and that's why we're here. We are Gentiles. We are the nation outside of God's chosen people. And look what it says here. Look in Acts chapter 10 verse 28. And this is Peter. Peter was arguably the greatest leader in the church. In the New Testament church. And Peter struggled with it. Why? Peter, well, first of all, he's a knucklehead. You know, Peter, there's always something wrong with him. That's why I know we're all messed up. Because if Jesus discipled Peter, oh man. <laughs> it's okay to be a disciple of Christ and you're messed up. Peter told them, you know it is against what? Our laws. For a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home. What is a Gentile? Anything outside Israel. Filipino, Vietnamese, Chinese, Americans, we're all Gentiles. If we were living that time. Paul says, you know what? The law says it is against the law to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with any Gentile. But look what he says. But God has shown show me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. We love our fellowship in the church. You hear me, We need to break that. Not all of it, but we need to. If it's a circle, we need to break this. You with me? We need to break that. But sometimes our fellowship should go like this and stay like this. And people want to come. Yeah, you can come, but you just stay outside. <laughs> And this one said, wait till we kick someone out. <laughs> okay, then you come in. This doesn't work that way. Paul says, we build each other up. Our fellowship should be like this. <coughs> we should keep coming people, plug in. Because when people plug in, like my illustration, I like it right now. Like I said, if you keep plugging in, the circle you grow. <laughs> We are like a family reunion church right now. Our vision is to transition from that to a soul winning church. To a church that says, you know what, come on. Yes. Come on. What is your problem? What is your drama? This is a church that has drama. Come on. It's okay. <laughs> Let's go have drama together. You have TFC, I have TFC. Let's go. You with me? Can that just be us? River State Church, can I hear me? We have 40 families in this church. We have 130 people in this church. We average about 90 people here every Sunday. And God keeps telling me, no. The devil keeps telling me, that's good. Good job, that's great. You keep it that way. Nice. You can handle it. You know, Sunday every Sunday, you make them laugh. There's preaching there. That's fine. And then they go home, and then they live their lives, they come back again. That's what the devil tells me every day. It's fine. God tells me, no. How many of you watch Titanic? Titanic. You no, know, Titanic's a very sad movie. Very sad movie. There's about 2,000 passengers. Only about 100 something survive. They say that there's about 48 boats. I watch it so many times, I know how many. <laughs> In each boat, it can care about 100 people. But guess what? 
all boats left of the ship the sinking and only how many people? About hundred something, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's there's Molly. I remember Molly? The fat lady. I didn't mean fat. Just lady. <laughs> they stop and says, we gotta go back. Because we have room in the boat. And then and then the guard's like, no, we're not gonna go back, they're gonna tear us down, you know, we're all gonna die. And he says, no, we gotta go back. You know what God tells me every Sunday? You're Molly. You're Molly. We're Molly. You can have a pat in the back, and we have 100 people here, but looking at those seats, God's saying, no. There's more. There's more. And it's not just my dust, I just it's, When we come together, guess what? When we're stronger, when we're together. Say together. together. Then the person next to you say together. together. When the body becomes active, it works together. Can I hear an amen? As simple as that. You know what this room for pastor is? We, we can sit about 150 people in this room. You know what they say? 70% full is full. You know what that means? If we just reach out about 20 people every Sunday, this place is full. <laughs> as simple as that. As simple as that. How hard is it to, 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 to reach out 20 people? Here's a commitment I just want to... I know there's... My, my vision is not until next week. I'm feeling it. We have food anyway, so I think we know. Now let me just tell you this. There's 52 Sundays in a year. You with me? Yes. 52 Sundays. If everyone of us here will just commit and say, I will give out flyer or I will invite three people a week. Three people. Not even seven people. Seven people is one a day. <coughs> three people is like one every other day. If I'm going to, I'm just going to invite three people the whole week. Doesn't matter if they come, they don't come. I'm just going to commit myself 50 to Sundays, I'm going to invite three people. People that I know, people that I don't know. I'm just going to go to Bones and hey, come to our church. Come to our church, there's my three. You know what that means? If we have 50 people doing that, that's 150 invitations a week. Now tell me if not one of them will come here. A week. 150 invitations a week. Times 52. I'm not going to do the math, but you get what I'm saying. Need more acceptance. Well, that's all right. Accepting church everywhere. Accepting each other right now. We need more. Can I hear an amen? amen? Just give a hand just to make sure that you have the love is on the And this is my final point. Look what it says here in verse 14. Verse 14, look what it says here. I'm fully convinced, my dear brothers and sisters, that you are full of goodness. You know this thing so well, you can teach each other all about them. Even so, I have been bold enough to write about some of these points. Knowing that all you need is this reminder, for by God's grace, I am a special messenger from Christ Jesus to you, Gentiles. I bring you the good news so that I might present you as an acceptable offering to God, made holy by the Holy Spirit. So I have reason to be enthusiastic. That's what we need to be. We are to need to be enthusiastic. I love that word. Let's say it together. Enthusiastic. What that means. Excited. <laughs> we need to be excited. About the whole week after this Sunday, tomorrow morning is Monday. We need to prepare. We need to engage the community. We need to say, you know, let's prepare for the next one. There's only about 52 Sundays a year. We need to be committed, enthusiastic, and say, you know what? I'm going to be excited next Sunday. And we're going to find ways to steer up and to, to engage the community and, and to to make our service better and everything else better for one purpose, building each other up, reaching out this community. Are you with me, River Faith Church? Yes. yes. 
Because we're like Titanic. Not that we're sinking, but we have rooms in our boats. We don't, a lot, I'm not saying that, you know, all men are going to come here. But we have room. Can I hear an amen? amen? Look what it says here. Yet, verse 18, yet, I dare not boast about anything except what Christ has done through me, bringing the Gentiles to God by my message and by the way I work among them. They were convinced by the power of miraculous signs and wonders and by the power of God's Spirit. In this way, I have fully presented the good news of Christ from Jerusalem all the way to... I don't know how to read... Yeah, that, 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 that nation. I want you to focus on verse 20. And we'll close with this. My ambition has always been to preach the good news where the name of Christ where the, where the name of Christ what? Rather than where a church has already been started by someone else. It's okay to invite people. But let's not invite people where they have church. <laughs> you with me? Because their pastor is going to be calling me. It's okay to invite. No, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I'm part of FETO. That, you know, I'm connected with other pastors. And so if you've gone astray and you attend a different church, I don't know. <laughs> you better not attend a Filipino church. I'm just kidding. What's the point, people? Let's not defeat the purpose. Yes, we can invite all our friends. Everyone is accepted in here. But let's have the same ambition. Last thing we're close to this. The ambition of Paul was to preach the gospel where it has never been. There are people that are not church people. And next week we're going to show a video of what Mira Mesa consists of now. We are in a melting pot community. Are you with me? We have H Mart. We have Indian Grill. We have Seafood City. You know, we are a melting pot community. And God's calling the name of River Faith Church and say, hey, you got room. I got people out there that's just waiting. The Bible says that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are sitting down. They're not moving yet. Not yet. Hopefully after next week, we're going to start moving. Can I hear an amen? We're close with this. Look what it says here in, in, in Acts 17, verse 22 to 23. Paul's heart has always been to reach out those who are unreached. Paul's heart has always been to go where everybody else have, hasn't gone. And look what it says here. So Paul is standing before the council addressed them as follows. Men of Athens. He understood that his his calling is to be a prophet to the Gentiles. Guess where he's at? He's in Athens. In the Greek cities. And Greeks are so messed up that they are very polytheistic, meaning they have so many gods. They have a god of, of water. They have a god of sun. They have a god of love. They got a god of harvest. They have a god of everything that they even have a god who is unknown. How messed up is that? They want to make sure they cover all the gods, so they even have a god for if there's a god that they don't know, well, that's you. <laughs> and how crazy is that? How do you know that that's the unknown god if you don't know who that god is? <laughs> but look what Paul says. Men of Athens, I noticed that you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines. They have so many gods, so many statues, so many sculptures all around Greek. They have so many temples. And look what Paul says. For I was walking alone, I saw your many shrines, and one of your altars had this inscription on it. To the unknown God. And Paul was like, what the heck? <laughs> Who is the unknown God? And look what Paul says. This God whom you worship without knowing. This is the one that I'm going to tell you. There's no name we're going to proclaim 
but the name of Jesus. Let Mira Mesa hear it. Yes. Come on, if you're ready with the great church and the pastor can be on base. We got Pastor Vision next week. Be here at church. If you're not here, you're not here. This is my encouragement to you next week. Be here. We got to cast our vision. Come a heart. Come with an open heart and say, you know what? I want to be part of the team. I have this gift. I have this idea. I have. It's time for us to come together and say, you know what? The times that we live in, and I keep repeating this, the times that we live in is much, much closer to what the Bible describes as when the day of the Lord is coming. The times that we live in right now, when you look around you, it's much, much more descriptive now than it ever was in the history of humanity. Riverbird Church, we have a job to do. After we have poplars, we eat, you have your meat, we have a job to do. And it's very simple. We have to reach out to this community because we have room in our world. Open that circle. Build each other. Amen. 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 Hold the person next to you. Remind that person, I'm here to build you up. Oh, God, I'm here to build you up. Let's pray together. Father, we are a church called under your name. I should prepare your prepare our hearts, Lord God, for a bigger calling. And in this church, Lord, we ask and we pray, Lord, that you capture our hearts, Lord. That we are the church that builds up. We are the church that strengthens one another. We are the church, Lord, that accepts, Lord, everyone that will come in, Lord. And in our prayer, Lord, as we conclude this fasting and as we celebrate today, Lord, that we may never forget, Lord, the purpose of it. And that is that you will prepare our hearts for a bigger calling, to a bigger mission, and to a bigger purpose, Lord God. And my prayer, Lord God, that you bring people here, not just for the sake of people coming in, not just for the sake of seats being filled in, not just for the sake of a crowd, but of a body that hold hand in hand together, claiming we will proclaim the name of Jesus in this community. And we will fight until the end. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against spirituality, principalities, and prince of the air. But we know that we have the victory in us because we live under the grace of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is on our side. Father God, we thank you for this Sunday. We thank you for the strength that you sustain us. Prepare us now as we come together, Lord God. Give us your vision. Give us your direction. Give us the power and the boldness, God. Help us to prepare and be ready, Lord God, for your calling for this church. We commit everything to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Again, we are going to have a pop bless after the service, so we encourage you to want to stick around. And again, I really want to encourage you, please get a packet as you wait out, um, so you know all the details about our family camp. Okay, amen.